Hi, my name is Nick Coleman. I'm the Environmental Projects Officer at Mid Coast Council and today we're going to be talking about Bidu. Due to the nature of the Bidu to actually change the dune formation to the detriment of native animals and plants, Bidu bush in 1999 was classified as a key threatening process. Bidu first arrived in the early 1900s in the ship ballasts and it got established around in Newcastle around 1910 and it was an accidental weed that came here accidentally. When the sand mining happened along the coast and some destruction of uh, forests, it was picked up in the 1940s, 50s and 60s as a way to stabilise the, as way to stabilise the dunes, but it, we quickly learnt that it wasn't a very good idea. It turned out that bitter bush wasn't very good for dune stabilisation because of the nature of its growth patterns. Very shallow rooted, if it's about a metre high you could pull it out by hand, and where it grows, it attracts sand to it, so it gets going higher and higher because it roots at the node and it forms a hummock, which is, could be about three metres high and on the side of the hummock there's no bidu bush so when the, when the breeze from the ocean comes forward, it hits the hummock and gets channelled to the side so, and it forms a channel of erosion and that salt air will then go through behind the dune and start damaging the vegetation behind the dune Okay, this is a classic example of bidu's hummock formation process so we have one hummock on this side, another on that side, and between the two, you get the, uh, the channel of wind coming in. And that erodes the soil and kills the vegetation behind it. Now these hummocks will continually grow as they catch more and more sand, so they can get very high, which will make this channel even deeper and channel the wind even further into the bushland behind it. This is an example of what happens when, because of the changing nature of the capabilities of the bidu to change the nature of the dune and create channels of wind erosion through the sides of them, the salt spray can come into the side and start to damage the vegetation behind it, which was never used to be exposed to salt. Usually the dune formation is more natural and gradual, but the, because the bidu changes that, salt air gets through, the trees behind it can't cope. And it's very hard for them to come back with the bidu still in place. Due to the dominating nature of bidu, native trees will never be able to establish here again and you really want the native trees to establish because they form a unified front which stops the breeze starting from a very low level all the way up to a high level and channels it up so then you get a more natural dune formation which is uniform across lets the breeze go straight up like a, um, like a ski ramp and then beyond underneath there's a microclimate for rainforest trees to develop but with the bidu here the native trees can't establish so the process is is to systematically get rid of these bidu trees. It's a process that takes many years, but it has to start, otherwise the process will only get worse. The removal process is spraying the bitu with a weakened down chemical solution. It's weakened down in the winter months because the native trees are more dormant and the bitu is flowering and seeding at this time. So they're more susceptible to a weakened poison dose. We target spray each bitu bush. It will die slowly over the course of a week the structure of the bidu will stay in place for a very long time, it will die, but the, the root systems and the, the sticks of the bidu will stay there. And what will happen then is that the hummock nature of the bidu will start to become less pronounced. So that will eventually subside a little bit, which will allow the more, the more uniform dune to form. And that means channels like we described earlier won't be, won't be existent, so they will fill in, and then you'll have a uniform spray, uh, uh, salt spray and wind spray protection barrier. We keep a couple alive and come back to them later when the natives have established. Once the bitter man has been sprayed, it's important that we go in there and plant with acacia species, pig face species, species that will naturally be on the side of the dune and they will, they will, they will recolonize where they once were. The benefit of having the native species is that they're more, they're more acclimatized to the dune system, they have better root systems but more importantly, they have different size structures. A successful dune is to start at a very small plant, like a spinifex or a pig face, and then gradually build up to a bigger plant. Bidu doesn't do any of that, but a native, a native, the native assemblage of plants will eventually do that. And that will mean that there's a long-term stability to the dune, and also the native trees on the other side of the hind dune, and even on the crest of the dune, they're, they're not as shallow-rooted. 